Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Elevated Business. And today in the studio, I have business coach, Kent Beam. In this episode, we're talking about the importance of taking action and taking action now. Let's get into it. I'm Mitch Hardington, your guide to elevated business. In this video series, we dive deep into the authentic journeys of business owners who've paved their way to greatness. Get ready to uncover their secrets that shape the remarkable world of business. Okay, Kent, we're here. Last episode. Let's do it. Our last bit of time together. We've talked about success, we've talked about hardships, we've talked about mindset, we've talked given people a lot of really great things that they can use today, they can use in the future. I really recommend you to start using them today, especially if you wanna be successful because success starts with you and it starts today, it doesn't start tomorrow. So, let's talk about advice. Let's talk about you though first. What is the best piece of advice you ever got? Oddly enough, a simple one. If it sucks, cross the street. Hmm. Just keep crossing the street. So it goes back to what we've talked about along the way, which is, you know, when when it's not as easy as you want or as what you visioned or it's not quite going the way you want, one step at a time, or literally uh, it was my uncle in law, I guess if you will, just cross the street and keep crossing the street until you make that progress. That was probably the best piece of advice. I love that. Because it's going back to playing by your own rules. If you don't like it, just change it. 100%. Win. Yep. Okay, what's the worst piece of advice you ever got? I really don't know because I'm a, I'm not a fast actor by nature. Uh, I'm a very much a pensive, thoughtful person, uh, reflective. So advice comes in and it gets pondered and then it gets mixed with everything else in the head. So it's not just actionable. So I don't know if there has been a specific piece of advice that hasn't served me. It's it gets blended with everything else, mm -hmm. and I that, and maybe the summary is, even in bad advice, when put in the context of your goals, your dreams, hopes, and vision, there's probably something in there when put in the mix that you can take from it. You know what? That that's so incredibly true and actually so powerful, because there's so many people out there, and I don't really care who you talk to, they'll say that you can learn something from everybody, right? So if you're always able to learn something from every situation, I think the worst possible advice people could have would be to just take something in and do it yeah. without actually processing it through your own thoughts, beliefs, morals, doing any of those things. It's just doing what somebody else tells you to do. I think that's the worst advice people can actually get. I'd agree with that. Yeah, and I, that's just something I totally was thinking about as you were saying it. I was like, yeah, what is the worst advice I ever got? And it's totally along those lines. If somebody tells you to do something, you just do it blindly. It's like, how do you know that it's gonna work for you? How do you know it's gonna go against, with, like, or go with your morals? I don't think I've ever done something other than at the bar drinking blindly. Yeah, <laughs> and generally that might not end well. So it generally why would doesn't. You, so why would you take that over <laughs> right. in the business? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh man. So we've talked about a lot about success, we've talked a lot about mindset. What do you think stops people from taking the next step? Fear. And fear, going way, way, way back, uh, is a great acronym. The word itself is false expectations appearing real. We're fearful of, insert anything here. Uh, for some people, it's fear that they might succeed that comes with other responsibilities. I would say by far and away, the greatest thing that gets in people's success or even the next thing is fear. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along, you know, 98, 99%, 100% of the shit we fear never shows up. It's not real. It's all up here. So the more we feed it, the bigger it gets, the worse it gets. So deal with it, put it on paper and then look at it and go, that's not so bad. And the other one that we, we've been working a lot within the last year and a half, two years with our clients, because there's been a lot of change economically in the world, is just inserting a wonderful little phrase, what if? So if you got that fear and you're hesitating about a goal, something you're dreaming of, something you're passionate about, you go, what if it works? Then you just use that, well, what if this? And what if that? And all of a sudden, it allows that goal, when attained, to flourish and actually blossom mentally 
and to visualize it and see what is possible by simply asking the question of what if, and then put in the context of the fear of, and then you kind of go, well, what am I actually really afraid of? It's not so big anymore compared to all the things that come with what if. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that because when I was younger, my parents taught me about what if, but it was generally like, what if insert bad thing happens, <laughs> right? I think so many of us are raised that way. It's like, well, you know, what if this bad thing happens? And that was the, what stopped me from my entrepreneurial journey the first time. My parents were like, well, what if, you know, the business doesn't work? What if you, it fails? What, what pension do you have? What, what about the education? What about, what about, what if, what if, what if? But I love that mindset shift of, okay, well, let's actually apply the same what if just in a completely different way. What if the bad thing doesn't happen? And what if the good thing happens? What if all the good things happen? Yeah. Because when we succeed, it's not one thing that changes. It's everything that changes. And if you apply that what if literally to every part of your life, that's way more impactful than one negative thing because the what if applies to your relationships, the people you hang out with, the restaurants you get to choose to go to, where you go on vacation, where you go to school, where you don't send your kids to school. You think about the choices you get to have as an entrepreneur when the what if works. It all changes. Mm -hmm. Somebody once said to me that the fear of failure stops people from doing something. But by actually not doing something, you're actually already failing. So you're bringing life to a thing that didn't actually exist until you created it. And in that thought, you created it. Yeah. Which goes back to episode one, mindset and goals. So that what you focus on expands. So if you're focusing on that negativity, the fear, it's gonna become reality. Mm -hmm. Whereas we focus on the goals, the dreams, what you're actually building, that will then become the reality. Yeah, your thoughts create your reality. Yeah. There's something you said, I'm just gonna read off a piece of paper because it was so good while we were in the break and you said, feedback, learn, change, grow. Can you expand on that? Whew. Um, one of the things, the greatest thing that my clients do, entrepreneurs do, is they start. And I used to call it get messy, get dirty, start. You, the more you do, the more feedback you can get, the more you can understand what you're good at and what you suck at. And so just simply by doing and initiating something, you get feedback. And what's the second one? Learn. Well, now you've initiated action, you can start learning what you're good at, what you suck at, where, where you need room for improvement, what things you don't need to do anymore. And then change. You get to modify your behavior, you get to modify your thinking, and as a result, we grow. And at the end of it all, the person who is in control is you. No, it's you. Well, it's actually, it's actually you. you, right? And you, and you, and you, and you. <laughs> and me, yes. right? I determine my life and my destiny. You can give me the best advice, the roadmap, and everything possible, but if I'm not gonna do it, then... Oh, that's all, what's it for? Nothing. Right? So, if you could go back in time to the start of your journey, everything we've talked about everything that we haven't talked about in that infinite wisdom you have up there, what's one thing you would tell yourself at the beginning of your journey again? I would have found, I would have got stronger and better at my mindset. Why? Uh, Self-fulfilling philosophy. My, my subconscious was not strong enough to um, lead into the life that I started to build. Um, and so having a stronger subconscious then leads the path to the rest. Now, maybe 17, 20 years ago, I wasn't in the position to have the subconscious. Maybe I had to do all the other work first to cycle back around and, uh, what were the words there? Uh, feedback, learn, change, grow. Had to go and get dirty, get some feedback, do some learning to grow. And so maybe, maybe now was the year, last year was that time to adjust the mindset and, and that subconscious, but that would be the number one thing. For sure. Subconscious mindset. Subconscious mindset. And I think, again, looking at the viewers again, the most important thing is to do it now. Right? If you're listening to this now and you're getting this advice now and something's resonating you, it means now is your time. You're supposed to start doing something. It's not one of those things where it's like, well, I'll get to it tomorrow or maybe I'll put that in the schedule and see when it's important. It's like, no, you have to take massive and immediate action all of the time. And if you're not doing it, then you're... You're not failing, 
but you're not doing yourself justice. And to me, that's what's more important because it's my life. I don't fail, I make my own, my own rules, so I win. But if I'm not doing the best that I possibly can, am I living a life that I want? Nope, right? So, closing remarks, closing thought. If you could give anybody one thing, what would it be? Your closing thoughts. Start. Take action. Yeah. Start. Start. Take action. Yep. I love it. Yep. So, Ken, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Thanks My for pleasure. The, thanks for these pre, these, all these four episodes. These were incredible. I know I learned a lot from it. Um, one of my favorite things about doing this is I get to go back and listen to them over and over again. <laughs> I would highly recommend people do the same thing because I know that I was here and I was live and I watched it happen and I learned so much. And when I go back again, I'm going to learn so much more. And I really recommend that you do the same. So again, Kent, thank you. You're if welcome. people want to contact you, how do they do that? Absolutely. Um, 403-690-8363. Let's go for coffee. Let's go for beer. Let's just talk shop. I love talking business. Eat, sleep, breathe it. I uh, love sharing my story and the stories of others. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, first name, last name, or the website, businesscoachingcalgary.com. Awesome. Thank you again. Also, thank you to the listeners who are here and make this show possible. I really appreciate everything, everybody here who has helped put this together. Um, until next time, and until our next guest, um, start. Live by your own rules and you can do it. As we conclude this episode of Elevated Business, I'm Mitch Hardington reminding you that every challenge is a stepping stone to greatness. Stay tuned for more stories of entrepreneurs who are shaping their destiny. Until next time, elevate your business and dreams.